Imagine you're on a bus tour, exploring one of the worst man-made eras and disaster in the history of mankind, Chernobyl. You've explored most of the exclusion zone under a guided tour, but want to see more. Luckily for you, the control room for reactor number four, the place where it all began, is now open for tourists who are brave enough to venture inside it for just five minutes. You know that's an opportunity you're not gonna miss and pick up those bonus visitation minutes. After putting on the assigned protective gear, you make your way inside the control room. But before you know it, your five minutes are up. You're back out, scanned for radiation, and put back on the bus with the rest of the tourists. But five minutes weren't enough. You wanted to see more, so you search for the few whispers you've heard about hot lava below the reactor. You think maybe you can book a tour there, but then you get to reading, and here's what you find out. Don't miss out on the new content. Like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to press the bell notification icon to get the latest updates. In April of 1986, a failed safety test and flawed design set the deadly fate, not just of reactor number four of the Chernobyl nuclear plant, but even its surroundings for miles. During the safety test, the core temperature of the reactor spiked, causing an immense power surge the control rods that normally regulated such a reaction were inserted too late. The heat generated inside the reactor was so hot, the water vaporized, generating enough pressure to blow apart the reactor's assembly. A second explosion sent radioactive particles into the air, spreading it across miles, turning it into the tourist attraction it is today, the exclusion zone. Here's what happened next. The core that once produced the cleanest energy in the world started to melt. The fusion of uranium and zirconium present inside the fuel rods melted through the metal at temperatures over 12,000 degrees Celsius. That's super hot, as hot as lava. In this case, radioactive lava. This lava oozed through the remnants of the pipes, melting and mixing with concrete, sand, and other material along the way. These were materials supposed to keep radiation getting out, if there was ever the slightest chance of it. Looks like that did not turn out so well, did it? After the disaster, it took about eight days to control the chaos around reactor number four. Choppers would dispose of sand, silt, and other materials into the reactor in an attempt to douse the fires. Sadly, most of the firefighters, pilots, and workers died from radiation sickness days after being exposed to these emissions. In December of 1986, the crew that risked their lives to contain the nuclear disaster found themselves inside a steam corridor located under the dormant but radioactive reactor number four. What they found was a solid mass of lava that sent radiation sensors off the charts, making the mass too dangerous to approach. Instead, scientists put out a camera on a wheel, pushed it towards the mass, and photographed it so that they could study it further. The photograph resembled a solid crust that clogged these steam valves, shaped like this, an elephant's foot. A few workers and researchers examined this structure physically. These brave souls discovered what consisted of melted concrete, core shielding, and sand, all mixed with only traces of nuclear fuel. They termed this mass as corium, but sadly, they also succumbed to radiation sickness. Here's why this happened. When the elephant's foot was discovered, its radioactivity was about 10,000 rentgens. To a common person, it meant radiation from the mass was so high that 300 seconds would be enough to prove fatal. Is there a chance it'll give you superpowers and turn you into a huge green thing like this? Not likely. So if you were thinking of going there, think again. After 30 seconds of exposure, in a week you would experience dizziness and fatigue. 120 seconds of exposure, the cells in your body start to hemorrhage. Stay a bit longer, say about 200 seconds, for vomiting, diarrhea, and fever. Push a little more, to 300 seconds. It would only be a matter of days before you'd die of radiation sickness. It's safe to say tourists aren't allowed anywhere near the elephant's foot. In April of 1996, 10 years after the disaster, researchers at the plant approached the lava crust getting close enough to take a few photographs, radiation levels had decreased, emitting about one-tenth of the initial deathly rays. These rays were still strong enough to damage the photos, making them blurry. By then, even 500 seconds of exposure would induce mild radiation sickness. An hour's exposure would turn out fatal. 
It was and still is very, very dangerous. Let's get back to present day 2020. Back to your tour. It is now over 20 years since the accident, and from what you've read, you assure yourself that's enough radiation for one day. You then go back to your hotel, reschedule your flight tickets, and scurry back to your country. As we've said before, the Chernobyl incident is one of the worst man-made disasters in history. The elephant's foot is still active and continues to melt into the base of the nuclear power plant. If this molten core hits groundwater, it would orchestrate another explosion. What's worse, it could silently leak into the water that residents drink, with no warning, just like the day of the Chernobyl nuclear plant explosion. So far, the only solution we have is to contain the radiation inside a steel sarcophagus and a concrete basement. Research suggests that it could be a few hundred or even thousands of years before the area around the nuclear plant is habitable again. As of April 11, 2020, reports have shown massive forest fires that have been burning around the isolated power plant, while the radiation at the plant, although dangerous, is lower than what they were in 1986. But the radiation reading close to the fires has spiked, and the winds blowing towards the rural areas of Russia and Belarus may carry these radiations with them. Nuclear radiations that were once contained now seem to be spreading once again. So is the nuclear situation really under control, or a blunder humans will never be able to get rid of? Drop a comment in the comments section below about what you think. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to press the bell notification icon to get latest updates.